hit albums, television show, movies. Crazy about her. And, uh, and here she is, Cher. Right. What does this hair do for your next movie? And it's not everybody script who's going to need that. It well, doesn't that, uh... it's not that important because in the movie that I just did, I wore a wig. Oh, you did? Yes. Yes, we should say that uh, movies... She has a fascinating role. We'll talk about it in a moment. She is the... Uh, she has a child who... How do you want... I don't know the polysyllabic name of the disease. Eric, Ele what was it? Elephant man's disease. Craniodiaphyseal dysplasia. It's not really elephant man's disease, but that's about as close as we can come to it. It's where instead of, you know, as we grow, all the calcium goes and is distributed equally in our body. And this boy, instead of being distributed, the majority of the calcium went to his skull. In the olden days, they called it lionitis because you have a very, very large, strange looking, very ugly face. Uh, uh, you, you know, it is, it is true that is that on your sock or on your, uh... You're gonna get cheesy so early? Well, I just, I just noticed that. I have to go this way. Can you see? Are we on the right side? I don't think it's, you can really see yeah, it through it's this. A, yeah, it's a tattoo. Well, you sure do take the risks, kid. I'll tell you that. Um, there are women... I mean... You, you, it, it is absolutely true. You uh, you look smashing, but I the courage to have somebody do that to your hair. What if you wouldn't? You know what I mean. How do how do you? What if you wouldn't have liked it? All right, let me tell you how I feel about this hair right now. When I did uh, when I did mask, they asked me to make my hair from black to red. The guy that turned it from black to red. I don't know, didn't have two brain cells to rub together, and he <laughs> did a really terrible job. It started breaking, and I went into um, a wig. From there, it went short because th my hair was really terrible. And then I thought, well, it's really short. Maybe I'll make it blonde. So I made it blonde, totally. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I thought, well, I should go back to black because that's who I am and long, boring story. And then I thought, well, I don't know. I want to go black right away. So I went to my hairdresser and I said, why don't we just do this? Make it black on one side and black on the other and leave it blonde in the middle. And he said, no, that would be terrible. And I said, well, the worst that could happen is that I won't like it and we'll make it all black. And so this is it. And you I like don't it. know. I think it's all right for a little yeah. while. Uh, but you have, you, uh, if you sat down with an agent, and you said, I want to be taken seriously as an actress. I believe I have the talent. I can concentrate. I get in under the role. I think I can deliver on the big screen. And I, I also am going to wear black leather jackets and uh, two-tone hair. He's going to say, this is not the way we do it out here. Which I suppose is a long way of saying that the achievement of having now been received as a serious, talented actress is all the more remarkable because you have not abandoned your own persona. End of speech. Unfortunately, it took me eight years to do it my way. I'm very stubborn. If someone had said, look, you know, put your hair in a Betty Furness do and wear a a shirtwaist dress and you'll get a job, I don't know if I would have been able to be so true to my beliefs. It didn't work out that way. People said, you're not talented, you have one name, you showed your belly button, I mean a million different things. You're never going to work in this business, we're sorry, Zygazunt, that was it. And then it wasn't it. And then I started to work. And as I worked, people forgot what I looked like or what I dressed like and looked at my work and that's kind of what I wanted people to do anyway I you know I cannot give up who I am if I'm gonna play roles that need to be who I am 
Are you, you can't be who you are and expect to grow if you pretend you're somebody else. I, you know, if I thought that, I would have never left Sonny. If, if I wanted to do, no, if I wanted to do what it was that people wanted me to do and made them comfortable, I would still be with Sonny. Uh, so uh, this is um, more than a few uh, reviewers or people who observe our culture have made the point that um, this all has happened to you without a man. Is that important to you? Having a man? No. No, is the fact that this achievement, ha this uh, serious Academy Award kind of interest in you by serious filmmakers has really all happened to you at a time when we haven't seen you paired in People magazine? Well, you've seen me paired, but not with the same person. Right. <laughs> Well, that's what I mean. All right. I, I don't think that it's really necessary to do things with or, or because of a man as I did it with Sonny. And I don't, I feel happy that I did it alone. If someone would have helped me earlier, it wouldn't have made me that unhappy. I don't really care how I get to a place as long as I get to the place, but unfortunately, uh, there was no one who could help me with this because I really wasn't willing to change myself that much on the outside so people would feel comfortable with what I was on the inside. Mm -hmm. You know, and it just didn't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Are you still enjoying this kind of attention? You cannot walk down the street. I mean, is it still fun to be famous for you? No, it's really nice. I almost never... I had a fight with a man for the first time in public I mean, it would have, if it would have been a, a woman, I'm only saying that it happened to be a man. Uh, people are usually so nice to me. I walk up and down the street here constantly in Los Angeles. They don't ever want to say anything except, hi, how you doing? I either liked what you did or where's your long hair? I mean, just things that, don't, that do not bother me. They're not an infringement on my space. And also, I think people just think that they know me. And... And that's nice. And it's also what I've known all of my life, and I don't think I would know how to behave, you know. Uh, two ch ch children, Chastity, Elijah. Uh, Chastity is 14? What? 16. 16. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> and Elijah is... Uh, Eight and a half. And are you in New York for keeps now, or...? Uh, I'm back and forth. I just can't seem to get here full time. Uh, and, and, and the children... There they are. Are with you here? Yes, except that picture is about... How old is that picture, guys? Three years old. Yes, ma'am. You want to stand? Go ahead. Hello, Shea. Nice seeing you. And Thank the you. way you have really matured. I'd like to know what is Chastity doing these days? And what is, is she interested in the movies? And how is your mother relationship, mother-daughter relationship? Well, she's fine, and uh, she is. She goes to uh, the High School of Performing Arts here in New York. She's very serious. <laughs> and uh, I think our relationship is very good. She's 16 years old, but I think is si at 16 she's much smarter and much nicer than I was at 16 years old. What does your daughter think of your role as a lesbian in Silkwood? I think that she felt the same way that I did, and that is that the character was a woman first, and her sexual proclivity was not exactly something that I was dwelling on. And had it had to be something that had to be more explicit, I would have done it, and I think that my daughter, who is very open-minded and also very mature, would have, if I'd done a good job, thought it was the right thing to do. Um, Mike Nichols saw you in Jimmy Dean. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, now you're performing in Silkwood opposite the, certainly the most sought after woman in film today, Meryl mm -hmm. Streep. You had to be a little crazy, or no? No. I, I, once I met Meryl and we started working, I wasn't nervous at all, but I almost didn't go because I was packing and I just said to my sister, I cannot go and work with Meryl Streep, there's no way. I just can't. I was like so nervous and my sister said, well, you know, they saw you, she saw you. If they hadn't liked your work, if they didn't think you could do it, you wouldn't be going. And I said, yeah, but what if they're wrong? 
She said, well, when you get there, you'll know. And when I met Meryl, she was so fabulous, and it was so easy. I'm not really saying, I mean, I don't want to sound like, you know, very flip, but acting seems to be something that is very easy to do for me.